What's up, baseball glove buddies? Uh, especially Frank Infante, John Eichen. Uh, I I tuned in late to a, a running debate between you guys. Uh, I thought you guys were bringing up some interesting comments, and uh, I thought I could maybe provide some video evidence of some of the things I'm finding, which may corroborate one or both of you. Uh, but try to add to the general knowledge base of the Glove Repair Network. Frank, I am not at all, my feelings are not hurt when you express an opinion. That's no big deal. So I thought you were very respectful. Don't even worry about it. Uh, I looked through a lot of these responses, and uh, I probably will touch on them a little bit later, but here's kind of what I thought would help. Um, the first line of, of Frank, of your uh, comment here, said, um, palm adhesive does not cause a palm crease unless you break in the glove poorly. I don't, I don't disagree with that. So first question, first thing is, the first thing you state, I find no disagreement with it. So if that's supposed to be an attack against me, it, it doesn't work because I agree. Um, plenty of pockets look great with gobs of it. Again, I don't disagree. I, I don't know. I don't know how how many you. I don't know how many uh, instances I have and what a gob would be considered. Generally, I don't see anything much more than a tablespoon of factory palm adhesive. But I don't know when you work on your own gloves. If you've ever taken it out, measured it, or I don't know. So, no problem. We're all trying to learn here. It's not a big deal. Um, take it slow and don't force the glove closed too soon. Uh, it's working for you. I, I don't know exactly what that means, and there's not like a picture to show, but it's okay. Uh, beat the hell out of it, out of the pocket, and make it flat. Okay, if it's working for you, cool. Problem solved. Squish it closed before you create hinges, and voila, you'll have a gnarly crease, which becomes a valley for the adhesive to settle into. Squish a glove closed before you create hinges, create hinges, and voila, you have a gnarly crease. Uh, that's possibly one reason, but there are a number of them, and I did some 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 posts or comments in the middle of the night. I removed them because I don't want to uh, uh, appear rude. You commented that I deleted them, and that was because I didn't want to appear rude to you. So, um, some things that can cause creases in a pocket certainly is not breaking in the glove glove correctly. But in your description of what you do, you didn't explain a lot of the things that you meant or how that would all work out. So here's what I did kind of to be helpful, I think. So I have six uh, gloves that are currently getting worked on here. They're stripped of all their lace. This happens to be a custom 1788, custom A2K B12, straight M1 catcher's mitt. A new with tags or new without tags, uh, 1786. A used custom Rawlings Pro 12KR-6. And a custom A2K 1613 left hand for base, first baseman's glove. Mitt, here are all their webs. They're just, you know, I'm probably going to lose them all now. Uh, so what I was going to do in this video is instead of my last videos when I tried to show what a glove looked like when it was open, the camera was everywhere, it was annoying. So what these are, these are prepped to be open, but I'm going to open them right in front of the camera. So if someone says, oh, well, he just doctored us before he took it, you can't, because you're going to see me tear these open right now. But I'm going to go through these one at a time and make some comments about the used ones. So four of these are used, two of them are barely used. So take a look at this A2K. And I don't know if the light angles show it clearly, but you may see a bit of a ridge here. And then one that comes up around there. Okay. Um, this would be an unusual place for um, someone to actually cause strain in creating a pocket. This is quite unusual. There's a ridge up in here. But I'm just noticing it's there. And then what you want to do is look inside before you take it apart and see if the palm okay also has matching undulations on it when you do that you can sometimes tell if the palm adhesive shifted before the glove was broken incorrectly or the palm adhesive moved thus 
defeating the ability to break in the glove correctly. Because Frank, what you've said is that a lot of gloves, the gods of palm adhesive come out fine. That's not something that anyone would disagree with. But what you aren't proving is that when uh, gobs of palm adhesive are taking out, it results in creases. In order to attack what I do correctly, that's what you have to prove. But you didn't make any statements that hinted at it, and you didn't show any proof that that exactly is what you're finding. So this is an attempt to show both sides of this as clearly as I can and look for possible reasons. So there's the A2K. Um, so let's open these. This, oh, oh, sorry, I explained. So here, this is an unusual pattern here because we have a huge amount of abrasion right here. That's just rub, okay? It's an abrasion rub. But if we look inside, and this has a strap back, so it's a little harder. If you look inside, you'll see an enormous hard, hard edge inside here. I'm running my finger along. Can you see in there? Each of these fingers, you see those molded up ridges inside? They aren't reflected outside. So what that is screaming to me is that there's palm adhesive stuck up on this layer that was supposed to mold the glove and what actually it did is it made all kinds of problems. I don't expect to find palm adhesive under this. In fact, I think this is floating above the padding. So I'm not used to the word delamination used here. Uh, I've worked a long time with skis and snowboards. So delamination typically refers to layers of a material which have become unglued. Uh, so if you lay carbon fiber, uh, ski surfaces, snowboard ski surfaces, if you hit a rock, you ding the ski, you'll split the layers. That's what a proper way generally of calling delamination. Um, you will also, if you've, you've taken apart 50 to 75 gloves, so if you look carefully, you will notice that in the entire pocket of all of your gloves, you will never see palm adhesive equally distributed on a used glove. It will not happen. So anywhere where you don't see the palm adhesive on the top and bottom, technically there's air in there so i wasn't certain about this air bubble thing i don't know that i've ever felt an air bubble i don't know you described it you didn't show anything i'm not sure how to take it but that's okay so maybe we'll find it here uh we've got a this 1788 so no creases so this is going to have palm adhesive but we don't know how much yet i haven't opened it uh so no palm no creases we can see some a bit of a ridge up in here and just tapping on this, you can feel that the palm adhesive is behind here. Just tapping, you can feel it. There's a solid thump sound, okay? Here where I know there isn't any. Different timbre, right? You can hear the solidness. That's palm adhesive behind there. I'm pretty sure, but I haven't opened it. We'll find out together. Uh, over here. Original palm, factory palm adhesive is in there. Do we see any creases? No. So is it is your uh, is your claim that factory palm adhesive does not necessarily cause creases? Is that an accurate statement? Yes, it does not necessarily cause them. But has, can we prove that <laughs> taking it out initially does cause them? That would be where you have to take gloves apart yourself, remove it, play with it, and see if they form. Okay, that's how you would prove it. You'd have to do work on it. Anyway, so here, let's open these up. Start with the A2K. Hold on. I'm literally pulling these open right now, so I might have to make a couple of uh, last lace cuts. So you remember, you gotta, when you're doing these, you gotta make sure that you cut all the laces. So here's the inside of an A2K. We're gonna pull out. I hope this is all in the frame, but there's only so much I can shoot at once. There's the finger and the thumb. So in an A2K, we have this internal leather piece, and on the back side, we will have palm adhesive. So I'm gonna pull this down, so I'm gonna eventually have to clean it anyway. And you can definitely see palm adhesive in there. Um, does it appear as though the entire palm is still connected? I would say a clear no. Where you see that light white is where the palm adhesive has just been taken apart. So we see some here, 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 none here, none here. Okay, so the idea that a, a glove with factory palm adhesive when it, from the factory will come with all of the surfaces touching with one glove is proven not accurate. Now, let's pull it down. And I'm sorry, it's a lefty, which is annoying. 
because they come out differently. But let's pull this thing all the way out. I don't know, Frank, if when you work on your gloves, you invert them. You may, you may not. A lot of guys who work on gloves, they don't. They just chase laces all over the place, which is fine. That's how you. a lot of people learn how to do it. Um, if you want to get a little bit more, uh, I guess, creative and try and innovate, you're probably going to have to do the, the opens like this. So let's open this glove up here. So now we have, right, we have the internal glove reversed. And there again, you can see, is this all palm adhesive fresh? The answer is no. There's nothing here. Where it's dark, there's nothing here. That's where it is, the light, the light pattern. So does this glove have air bubbles in the pocket? Yes. Does the pocket crease? No. And then if we want to look at the other side in here, we can do that. Now granted, this piece of leather doesn't show much adhesive, so you're going to see a few hexagonal dots because that's the shape of these holes. So one, two. And this one we're not going to probably find uh, skill size pieces rolling around. It just probably wouldn't happen. That's the uh, B2, uh, the B12. Here we go, Rawlings. I'm sorry, I thought I prepped all these hoes. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to do this live and sometimes they don't work just right. So here we go, pulling this apart. Okay, custom Rawlings. Let's take a look. So we can clearly see, you see that large bit right in here that's very easy to see so we've got some palm adhesive there uh do we have any palm adhesive up in there where i was tapping uh the answer is a complete no and i'll prove it when i flip it inside out so here's what i have so far you can see kind of like the stalact stalactite stalagmite hanging piece but let's pull them i know i'm gonna have to like <laughs> find all these foam and pinky parts and like label them because I'm gonna get them all mixed up. I know it. It's part of the fun. It's live TV, people. Uh, table full of stuff. I guess this will work. Pliers. Okay. I'm gonna turn this inside out. Remember, pinky. Ring finger, middle finger, index fingers last, then thumb, and boom, inverted. Just tug it inside out. Don't worry, you're not going to hurt anything. This is actually pretty, pretty sturdy material. Okay, so now let's take a look at the inside of the glove. Now on that previous A2K, we didn't see much damage to the felt. Okay, we didn't. Felt shows very little damage. So these pieces aren't ragged or torn away. There is palm adhesive stuck in here, okay? But they're not shredded out. Check out the rollings. Now, now you will begin to see why I take it out of stuff. That's palm adhesive here. If you can see, that is a torn off piece. This has been split and yanked down. Second one, same problem. I actually have to be very careful with this one. There's so much palm adhesive under it, sorry. Uh, is that a nice flat edge? No, it is ragged and crappy. Third finger. That's how you get it off, folks. It works, it's just gross. Third finger, adhesive in there, not so bad, but I have to clean that crap out of there. Okay, so here's one counter argument to your position. Factory palm adhesive, if left in a glove, will damage the felt. There are no questions. I'll show it again and again and again. But if your claim is that my method isn't as good, then you are going to have to figure out how to keep this from happening. Because it will happen, not sometimes, it'll happen all the time. It eventually occurs unless you can remove the factory palm adhesive. Okay? That's a strong point. And a point which you, I don't know how you could prove wrong. But again, I don't know any videos by, you know, that you have. So we'll take a look up in here and we'll see that the area with that white spot is what I guess you would call delaminated. It's floating. Uh, the reason it's floating is because the palm adhesive, uh, which was stuck in here, eventually tore off the felt and there's no tackiness. 
that's why it's floating. So, how did they develop? Hard to tell. Did they break in the glove wrong? Hard to tell. Is the palm adhesive in places it shouldn't be, like way over here? Yes. I can't tell what caused it, but I can tell by the palm adhesive. The palm adhesive is the thing that's damaging it. So if you remove the thing that could damage it, how can you retard the process of breaking in the glove? I just don't understand it. Uh, here's the 1788. Custom 1788. So we can see on this glove what you would call a low degree of delamination. Pretty sticky all the way across. You can actually see these, again, the stretchy marks. Let's pull the <clears throat> pinky and thumb. And real quick, let's invert this, double check. The key is we're trying to look for actual examples, not hearsay, not opinion, but what the heck's inside a glove. And it's not as though I don't, I'm speaking now like just to anybody who, who offers challenges. Uh, this group used to be a lot of, hey, who do you know and who taught you? It's turning into what it should be. Prove it. Prove it. Show it. Prove it. And that's good. Because you cannot learn with people who just throw opinions out and then walk away. That, that isn't learning. That's just someone trying to, I guess, indoctrinate, which is not what we want to be about. I like to learn. I like to prove myself wrong because then I get better, right? So here we go. Um, there you can clearly see that, uh, where is most of that palm adhesive? Probably at least 50%, uh, eh, 35% is into the felt. Once again, what will happen eventually? It'll tear the crap out of it. That's factory palm adhesive. I don't know that this is gobs, but we saw originally the pocket wasn't damaged, so it was smooth. Is there still damage happening up here? The answer is yes. So that's two out of three have it. Okay, two out of three. And we're seeing it right now live. Uh, up in here, lots of palm adhesive was applied. In fact, it's probably evenly divided between what's stuck in here and what's stuck on there. So uh, this would, I would say, be about a tablespoon. So this would maybe be a gobs. But pocket had no creases. So to your point, is it possible for a glove with gobs of palm adhesive, factory palm adhesive, to not have a crease? Yes. So you are proved absolutely correct. Uh, here we go with the... The A2K for a spaceman's mitt, the 1613 model. These are nice because they fold open, so it's a little easier to show what's going on. Uh, okay, so we have on the side where the ball strikes. Remember, we didn't really start with any weird uh, pocket issues. So there we see the palm adhesive that is snuck between the hexagonal holes. Now as we gently remove this piece, which you can do, it's not sewn in, okay? It's laced in, so you gotta be careful and pop it off. What we'll see is a lot of palm adhesive behind it, okay? Uh, so, remember, where are we catching balls in a first baseman's mitt? We're catching them in this area, correct? So we'd expect to see palm adhesive here. But, palm adhesive that isn't in that area would be examples of palm adhesive, factory palm adhesive that had migrated through the pounding flat. So when you say pound it flat and your pr problems are over, not exactly, because let's take a look. Where is the palm adhesive where it doesn't belong? How many people are taking balls up in here? Up at their fingertips, anybody? No. That's gobs, this is a lot. This is probably over a tablespoon total, okay? That's a lot. Is it all where it needs to be? No. Is it all on this side? No, it's actually wrapping around. What would be the good, the part of uh, factory palm adhesive wrapped around the backside of your fingers? What good would that do you? The answer is none. It's extra weight, it doesn't do you any good. You don't need padding in here. So I don't know how that's helpful, but this is again, we're tr I'm trying to prove some of what you said true or false just so all of us can look at it and say, okay, well, we can learn. Uh, obviously, you can clean this off. Oops, you can clean it off and re, you know, relace it in. It's still good, nothing wrong with it. But uh, uh, it is difficult to tell, based on this, why there's some gaps right here. I would agree with you. It looks as though there's no palm adhesive behind it. This would be a section where you call it delamination. Uh, let's try and think of a better word that isn't like that. Um, where let's say there, there's there's uh, 
no no factory palm adhesive on both sides that's probably a little more accurate i don't know a short word for it but there wasn't any here hence that little bit of a wiggle so not having factory palm adhesive may have caused that wiggle so that's kind of a point toward your interpretation of what's going on here uh so there's the 1613 this table is getting messier by the moment uh we got two more here so we've got a new without tag so this is not a used glove 1786 when they're new without tags you will see me straining because it's brutal getting this these things to open take out the and again Frank I I would love to like whatever uh, channel or whatever if you have a lacing thing I'm more than happy to like and follow it I try and do it with everybody on here uh, I don't know if you do that. I just see your name pop up in a lot of forums, and you're big in the world of collecting and glove knowledge. So I'm trying to ascertain if the knowledge that you're that you're sharing with me is based on experience or is it more anecdotal? I don't know. So anecdotal obviously is based on a story. Uh, experiential is based on an experience. And what I'm trying to do here is uh, do kind of like active experiment. So everybody can see. So here we go. 1786. Lots of factory palm adhesive. The glove has never been used. It had no crease. Okay, no crease. No usage, no crease. I'm going to pull it out. Okay. And here we go. Brand new glove, never used. Is all of the factory palm adhesive located in the pocket area of the glove? The answer, once again, is no. It is up in the felt. Uh, has any of it wrapped around? Eh, a little. A little, but not bad. But still, why does it need to be there? I would say this is an over-application of factory palm adhesive. Let's check up on the other side. Lots of it left there. It is spread pretty evenly around the pocket. If you look closely, you will see that some of the felt has been torn away as I separated the glove. And I had Eric Lowers make a mention and say, well, the reason why it tore is because you took it out. No, the reason why it tore is because the palm adhesive had grabbed into it. So that point I didn't think was, I didn't understand the point there. But I don't know. I've been wrong too. So anyway, so there's your creaseless but gobs of palm adhesive. It hasn't been used. 1788. And the last one, I thought I'd throw in a catcher's mitt because you and John were talking about catcher's mitts. Uh, let me review let me review here, uh, Frank. I, mitts, I understand, are more susceptible to it getting stuck in a corner because it's going to hit padding deflect past the corners of the pocket. So it might be beneficial in a pet to take some out, but in a regular fielder's mitt, to take it all out is silly. That one I'm going to disagree with you categorically. Um, here's why. I have never in my life, and remember I didn't open this before, I have never in my life ever once seen palm adhesive in any corner of a catcher's mitt. Never. Not balled up, not like this, not original application, and not banged away. Does not happen. So getting palm adhesive stuck in a corner. I would say is categorically, I, I have no experience that proves that. So I don't know if that was an experiment you did, maybe before you showed it. Uh, but this is a glove taken apart, and this is almost dead nuts what every glove look, mitt looks like. Palm adhesive right in the middle there. Uh, if we take a look at this, remember I, I mentioned there was a small ridge coming out of here. Uh, if you notice, that ridge goes up into this area, and... If we look, it's a little difficult to see with the video, I'm sorry. There is a slightly thicker groove of palm adhesive there. Did the palm adhesive cause this? I don't know. Did it stop it? No, there's there's the problem, it doesn't stop it. So banging it harder may or may not do anything. So I, 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 I'm I trying to prove myself wrong, prove you wrong, prove any of us right, all at the same time, trying to do the work. So then here's how you, you obviously you take it out, but. Um, so yes, uh, palm adhesive in a catcher's mitt is in incredibly annoying because what happens there is I'm sure at a catcher's mitts that you've worked on, 
you've or you've played baseball and you've seen a catcher with a new mitt and all kinds of balls are popping out of the pocket. Well, here's why. This plus this equals a surface that doesn't shed shock, shed impact well, it reflects it. So ball, it is almost impossible with factory palm adhesive removed. And when I say removed, there's still a tacky surface. So you don't get a bunch of pieces just floating one on top of each other like it seems, it sounds like you think might happen. It doesn't happen. This surface still sticks to this one. It's just able to flex and move a little bit. So as the ball strikes it, both surfaces are able to adjust to it independently. That kills and deadens the uh, actual velocity of the throw, which allows you then to have the ball not pop out. You want to figure out why your glove or, or your catcher's or your kid with his brand new catcher's mitt is dropping everything. There it is. Take it out. They'll be able to catch. It's remarkable. It works every single time. There's a catcher's mitt. Uh, that's all my mitts. So hopefully, I mean, that's a lot, uh, a lot of pull aparts, but hopefully new and used and uh, things that cause palm creases. Big ones, you didn't really mention them, but that's okay. Um, if your hand is too large for the glove and you're wearing it, do I have a glove that's together? No, of course not. Um, let's say I had this glove and I wore it. I'm going to get a glove. I have to to show you this. So, let's say... So let's say you got a new X2, and I did, thank you, Emilio Canto, I got a new one a couple weeks ago. Uh, I removed the palm factory palm adhesive, which is also what caused this stain. So another reason why it's not a bad idea to remove it is because if you leave it in, this will happen to a Wilson. So Frank, I don't know if you're a Wilson collector, maybe you're a Rawlings guy, you were talking about a Primo. Um, Rawlings uh, palm, factory palm adhesive recipe doesn't react with their leather the same way so it doesn't leave with blotches these are caused not by oil nobody poured oil on it everybody thinks it's oil it's a factory palm adhesive so leaving it in you'll get this guaranteed that's another reason to take it out and you're a collector so you would appreciate how to keep your glove looking great all right this is an x2 it has no factory palm adhesive it's mine okay so i've been using it um so Closing well, carefully, look carefully. No creasing in the pocket, no factory palm adhesive, okay? So is it possible to produce a glove that has no creases without factory palm adhesive? Yes. All of my gloves, I could take them off the wall, they look the same. So that's several examples that would suggest that taking fa factory palm adhesive out does not mean you're gonna get creases. But some of the reasons you can get creases, let's say you jam your hand too far into your glove. This is one of the biggest things that drives me crazy when I would fit gloves for people. If you're taking your hand and you're smashing it in there, you're gonna be fighting against your own hand. That's the ergonomics of putting your fingers all the way into a glove, you turn into this. Will this cause a crease? You better believe it. I did it in two squeezes right there, do you see it? Crease right there. See it? And there's just a little tackiness inside, so it shows up. Now, if you're wearing a glove correctly, you should be seeing quite a bit of your wrist, okay? This is not how gloves are supposed to fit. They don't fit like this. A lot of people think this. That's not how your glove's supposed to fit. You wear your glove like that, you'll have all kinds of crappy pocket action. Palm adhesive, no palm adhesive, okay? Um, Frank, it would be nice if you did like a little tutorial showing some things that you uh, suggest when you're teaching people how to break things in. I don't know if that's your, I don't know if you've got the capability. I mean, it's a tripod and I don't mind talking. Uh, I guess my last comment was, uh, you didn't, you said, <laughs> this was a funny one. Uh, and no, I don't have videos of my relays or teardowns. I don't feel I need to stand in front of a camera, I'm sitting, and talk about how great I am. Did anybody hear me say that? Did you hear me say that? So Frank, if you find me say that in any of my videos, let me know, please. I will delete the video. Uh, I have said, and this is where I, I thought maybe this is what you might have heard. I have said I am very grateful to the Lord Jesus Christ for allowing me to lace gloves and uh, persevere through some really bad illnesses I had. So maybe you just heard the great, grateful. 
Um, there's your answer, Dave Wagner, even though he deleted your 3 a.m. comment. Okay, you don't have any video. Okay, that's fine. So you don't have any videos of your releases and teardowns. But in this group, you, you realize that we're trying to uh, expand our knowledge base as a group. And if you have nothing besides an opinion, expect to be cross-examined. Like, it's not a big deal. Nobody dislikes you. In fact, I've reached out to you and PM, friend request. I'll put my, uh, my, my cell phone numbers everywhere, 847-899-5423. Anytime. I'd love to chat with you. I'm not going to make fun of you or anything. I don't think I did it in this video. And I don't think you're rude or anything else. I have no ill will towards you. I, I don't know you. I really don't know you. But uh, anyhow, maybe the, those were some, maybe something in there helped clarify some of the opinion you have. So when you do say at the very end, the very end here, uh, Fred, the point of this post was more to quash the notion that it's a necessary thing to open up a brand new glove and take it out, or that it's the sole reason the crease happens in the palm. Um, I agree with you. It is not necessary to take it out. You don't. You're the one who's going to have felt that's going to get damaged later on, but it's not necessary. A lot of pros don't take it out. Doesn't mean it's not a good idea. It's not necessary to wear a bike helmet. It's usually a good idea. Kind of like that. Um, the sole reason the crease happens in the palm, I agree with you. Uh, palm adhesive is not the sole reason the crease happens in the palm. So we're in agreement on that. We're in agreement that in your first comment here, that uh, palm adhesive doesn't cause a palm crease. I agree with you on that. So the only thing, uh, the only thing I don't think you have proven, and I hope perhaps I've disproven, is that uh, by removing palm adhesive, you will get a crease. Or you will get layers of leather floating randomly. This feels very intact, very solid, and all it has is a wafer tackiness left over. So that's still in a glove that I work on. And a lot of people already this year have used it to help get a glove ready for their kids. So I, I think it's working. But look, you're a collector, you have your own opinions, but if you say something, uh, expect me to challenge it, and it's not a big deal. I'm not mad about it, but anyway, uh, hopefully that was a learning for somebody uh, looking around inside all those gloves and some people say they like it when I take the glove apart Whatever anyway, so Frank. Thanks, buddy and everybody else. I hope that was helpful and Keep lacing keep taking things apart. Keep innovating keep calling me and asking me how to get out of a problem We'll figure it out, but thanks so much for being part of a great group